أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين Today I'm going to start إن شاء الله with the seerah of Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه the second khalifa after the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم it was really amazing story the story of Umar ibn al-Khattab how he started his life and how he ended. How he was changed completely because of Islam. So let's begin with the definition, with his ID. So Umar radiallahu anhu, his name is Umar ibn al-Khattab. So Al-Khattab is his father and Al-Khattab is the son of Nufayl ibn Abdul Uzza ibn Ka'b ibn Lu'ay ibn Fahr. So the amazing with this chain that his fourth grandfather is the same fourth grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam. So both have the same fourth grandfather so they are relatives and his mother subhanallah she's the cousin of Amr ibn Hisham who is Abu Jahl so Abu Jahl considered as his uncle from his mom's side and Khalid ibn al-Walid is considered as his cousin from his mother's side. So this really, you know, reflect how this family really was very noble. And he is from tribe called Bani Uday. And he was in charge before Islam to be the ambassador for Quraysh. So he was the one who is representing Quraysh if they have any issue with other with other tribes and if there is any dia concern or any argument between Quraysh and other tribes so Umar he is the one in charge to deal with it. So now you understand how really was Omar representing the most strongest and the leaders of the Arab, and that is Quraysh. For sure, it was narrated that Omar used to worship idols before Islam and used to drink khamar. One time, Omar said that I, I was at home and it was cold. So I felt that I want to worship my, my idol. So he don't want to go outside and he don't have an idol at his home. So he make an idol from dates. And Omar said, after a while, I don't have food in my home. I get hungry and I eat it. So one from the Muslim young man, he asked him, Ya Amir al muminin is that really that you used to worship these idols? You don't have mind? So Umar al-Khattab answered 
look to this question. He answered, yes, we have a mind, but there is no guidance. And this is the truth. Many people, they have mind. They are having PhD degrees. They are having doctor degrees. They are having high level of education, but they are in shortage of guidance. This is the very important thing. When you lose guidance, your knowledge doesn't help. Doesn't help. It is very important that we acquire guidance. And that's why it is important when we always recited Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He make it, you know, in force on every prayer. You have to read Surah Al-Fatiha and we have to ask Allah guidance every day 17 times minimum every day without the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be lost and this is what happened with Omar and with everyone once they lose the guidance they lost and many of the companions if they were stay on the non-islam on the ignorance, like Abu Jahl, like Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Who knows about them? Nobody knows. The history doesn't write anything for those people. But look to Umar ibn Khattab, look to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, look to Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. After they embrace Islam, their life changed. And they have a bright pages in the history. So Islam changes people to the best. And Islam takes out the best from you and present it to people to help the communities and to help the nation. So his birth was 13 years after the year of the elephant. So do we know the year of elephant? It was the year when Abraham Ashram came with the big elephant trying to destroy Al Kaaba. So on that year, the Prophet ﷺ was born. And two years after, Abu Bakr Siddiq was born. But Omar radiallahu anhu, he was born after that year by 13 years. So the difference in age between Omar and the Prophet وسلم, was 13 years. So when the Prophet وسلم, started his message and he became Rasulullah وسلم, he was 40 years old, right? So Omar ibn Khattab was 27 years old. And Umar ibn Khattab accepted Islam after six years from the Prophet ﷺ message. Which means, so Umar, 27 plus 6, he was 33 years old when he accepted Islam. So what happens during this six years? So, as I mentioned, his father was not so famous, but he was tough and he was having no specific leader rule in Quraysh. Instead, Omar was having that rule because Omar was a, a very good speaker and a loud voice and he was a wise man. He used to go all the time to the desert, taking care of, of, the, of the camels, which he has. And he used to train himself always, which is amazing from Omar. He used to train himself when he used to stay alone with something very odd. 
very odd. You know, at that time, very few people who knows how to read and write. One of them was Umar. So Umar was among those few people who can read and write. But what was Omar training himself when he was alone? To train himself to write in both hands. Can you try that? It's really incredible about Omar. He can write in both hands. And both hands are right for him. About his marriage, he married many women before Islam. And when he accepted Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, وَلَا تُمْسِكُوا بِعِصَمِ الْكَوَافِرِ means if you have a wife which is not Muslim, you shouldn't keep her with you. So Umar at that time was having three women, three wives. So he asked them, to accept Islam, they refuse. He divorced the three of them in the same night. When this verse revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. So he divorced three of them at the same time. So after Islam, he married to three women. But the amazing one among them, the story of Umm Kalthum. So he married Umm Kalthum. She's the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And this is an amazing story. After he became Khalifa, so he asked Ali ibn Abi Talib, will you give me your daughter Umm Kalthum to be my wife? So Ali said, She's young and you are 50 something years old. So Omar insists, he said, but I would like to have her as my wife. Ali, because he loved Omar, he don't want to disappoint him. He said to him, I don't mind, but she's young. But to be clear, I will send her to you. You look at her. If you think she's okay with you, I don't mind. I accept. But indeed, Omar, he wants to have this marriage because he has something in his mind. So he saw Umm Kalthum and he accept. And he told Ali, yes, indeed, I want her to be my wife. So he get married to Umm Kalthum. After he write the nikah, so he came to the Muslimin and he gave them the speech. And he told them, you are saying that Omar married to a young girl. I know you are saying that. I'm not hiding this. But by Allah, I will never do it except for a reason and the reason behind that because i hear hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said every relation and every nasab nasab means marriage relation so every relation, relation means friendship or nasab. It's a marriage relation. And every sahar, sahar means you become his daughter's husband. All these relations on the day of judgment will be valued as zero, will be nothing, will cost nothing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except all relations with me 
and all marriage belongs to my family and all seher belongs to me. And Omar said, I have the first two, the relation. I was a close friend to the Prophet وسلم, and I have the nasab. I give him my daughter Hafsa. She's his wife. And I would like to have the third one to marry his daughter. That is Ummu Kulthum. She's the daughter of Ali, the daughter of Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So his thoughts always to make a good bonding and relation close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one thing more amazing about Omar, you know Omar, he has many, many children. So among his children, he has three children called Abdul Rahman. Three children, he named them Abdul Rahman. So in order to make a difference, so he named the first one the elder Abdul Rahman, and then the middle Abdul Rahman, and then the youngest Abdul Rahman. So they ask him, why you give the same name to three of your children? He said, by Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the most beloved names to Allah is Abdullah wa Abdul Rahman. So I love Abdul Rahman name. I have three wives. Whenever I go to every house, I would like to hear this name in my house. So his always attitude is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make more close relations with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his titles, the names given to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu You know, we are in this time, we are proud of our titles like doctor or PhD or engineer or a lawyer or a teacher. So this is our titles. But look to the titles of Umar ibn al-Khattab. It's completely different than ours. So the first title he was given by the Prophet ﷺ, he named him Aba Hafs. Aba Hafs. And it means in Arabic, Hafs means the son of the lion. Means lion. So the reason why he was given this name in the battle of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ told the companions, if you saw my uncle Al-Abbas, don't fight him and don't kill him. So, if you don't remember, I will just refresh your memory. So, Al-Abbas he accepted Islam before the Prophet ﷺ immigrated to Medina. But he kept his Islam secret in order to deliver the news of Quraysh to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ, he don't want to expose Al-Abbas to Quraysh. Otherwise, Quraysh will kill him if they know that he is delivering news to the Prophet. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ told his companions, don't fight my uncle. So one of the companions, he said, how come we are fighting our fathers and our sons in this battle because they are non-Muslims? And the Prophet asked us not to fight his uncle. So here, the Prophet Sallallahu looked to Umar and he said, O oh, Aba Hafs, would you accept that the uncle of your Prophet will be killed even he was forced to go to this battle? He wasn't, he don't want to come this battle, but he was forced by Quraysh leaders. Then Omar said, no, Ya Rasulullah, by Allah, I will not accept that. 
So the people who don't know the story behind it, they will find, yeah, this is odd. How come the Prophet ﷺ will let us to fight our fathers, the mushrik fathers and the mushrik sons, while he don't want this to happen to his uncle. But his uncle was Muslim, but nobody knows that he was Muslim. And the second reason, the scholars of the seerah, they said, he was given this name Aba Hafs. It is connected to his daughter Hafsa. When she become the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu then the Prophet Sallallahu used to name him Aba Hafs, means he's the father of his wife Hafsa. So both reasons are there. The second name was given to the to Amir al-Mu'mineen, to Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, the second name was Al-Faruq. Al-Faruq. Al-Faruq means the divider. The divider. So when he embraced Islam radiallahu anhu, at that moment, when he accepted Islam, the Prophet sallallahu told him, you are Al-Faruq. You are the one whom Allah will divide will separate between the truth and the false, al-haqq wal-batil. And the third name was really very nice occasion. When Umar become the second Khalifa after Abu Bakr Siddiq passed away, so the companions, they are confused what to call him. So they used to call Abu Bakr Siddiq Khalifa Rasulullah, the successor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when Umar take the role, so they used to call him Khalifa Khalifa Rasulullah, the successor of the successor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this, you know, is heavy in talk. So one time, Uday ibn Hatim radiallahu anhu he was coming with a group from Iraq to cheer Umar ibn al-Khattab so he came and he asked Amr ibn al-As Amr ibn al-As was there so he asked him will you take permission for my people from Iraq who came to visit Amir al -Mu'mineen? So, Amr ibn al-As said, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the prince of the believers. Amir al-Mu'mineen. He said, who's Amir al-Mu'mineen? Then Uday said, he's Umar. He said, how come? Then Uday said, is he our Amir? He said, yes. Then he asked, are we believers? He said, yes. Then he said, then he is Amir al -Mu'mineen. So he went inside after he get the permission for the group. And he said, Assalamu alayka ya Amir al -Mu'mineen. To Umar. Amir al -Mu'mineen, he said, who's that? And he was looking around. Whom you mean? He said, you Amir al -Mu'mineen. You are our Amir and we are the believers. He said, yes, that's right. So from that time, he was given this name, Amir al -Mu'mineen, And later on, all the Khalifa came after, they were given the same title, Amir al -Mu'mineen. So, how he look? What is his shape? You know, we, we, get through Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. We used to know that he is not too tall. He's a bit shorter. He's very skinny and white face with the much of hair on his head and looks handsome. That was Abu Bakr Siddiq. But Omar is completely different. Omar was very tall, very tall. And they used to say, when you look 
to Umar walking, you think that he is riding a camel. Now you, you can imagine how tall he was. And he was very strong with the big muscles. And he was no hair. He has no hair. But he has a big mustache. A big mustache. And he was having a white skin. Going to redness. White to red. But some of the scholars of Sira, they used to say Omar become black. And the reason why he become black, in the year of Ramada, they call it the year of Ramada, the year of the starving. At that year, there was very less rain and there is a shortage of food. And people, they, they suffer from hunger. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he swear that he will never eat any kind of flesh or fat until all the believers will eat. So his food was only bread and oil. That's it. Bread and oil. And because of this, his skin color becomes dark. And he becomes very skinny. So it was narrated that the believers, they used to do the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease that year, not because of their starving, but indeed because of Umar ibn Khattab, how he turned into that shape. So Umar ibn Khattab was having a very loud voice. So the scholars said, if you are not aware that Umar is talking and suddenly Umar talks, you will feel faint, scared because of his voice. So his voice was very loud, very loud. And one time when he was the Khalifa, a man asked him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, which one is better to be a very heavy hair or without hair? By the way, the Arab on that time, they think that the one without hair is more wise and more noble. So that fellow. He asked him, which one is better? The one without hair or the one with the heavy hair? So Omar think Abu Bakr Siddiq was a very heavy hair while Omar without hair. So the Arab think the opposite, right? So he said, the one with hair is the best. He meant Abu Bakr Siddiq. When the things come to Abu Bakr, there's no challenge. There's no challenge. One time, a group from the companions sitting with Omar. You know, Omar, he did a lot of things for the Muslim Ummah. And one of them, he said, by Allah, you are the best one we have ever seen. Omar looked very angry to him. Then somebody, someone else, he told, no, we have seen who is better than you. Then he asked him, who's that? He answered, he was Abu Bakr Siddiq. Omar replied, you said the truth and all of you has light. So when it comes to Abu Bakr Siddiq, Omar, he leaned his head and he admit and he used to say, I wish I am only one hair in the chest of Abu Bakr Siddiq. I will never race again with Abu Bakr Siddiq because Abu Bakr used to win the race all the times. So this is the identity for Umar al-Khattab. Inshallah, the next halaqa will be about 
how he embraced Islam. And that is really an amazing story. How he turned from being Kafir to a Muslim. But keep in mind, it won't happen suddenly. There is some occasions because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide him. So there is occasions, incidents happened in his life which lead him step by step to go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and declare his Islam. Inshallah, we'll talk about it in the next halaqa. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma jma'na ala ma yurdiq. Waj'alna min al-mutahabbina fiq. Allahumma jma'al jama'na hadha jama'an mubarakan marhuma. Wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi ma'asuma. Wa la taj'al minna wa la fina shaqiyan wa la mahruma. Allahumma inna du'afa'u faqawwina. Wa inna adhillahu fa'azzana. Wa inna fuqara'u faqnina. Wa inna muzlibuna faqfir lana warhamna. Allahumma la taj'al lana fi maqamina hadha dhamban illa ghafartah. ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا عيبا إلا سترت ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا مريضا إلا شافيته وعافيت ولا غائبا إلا لأهلي سالما رددت ولا حاجة لنا من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا يسرتها وقضيتها يا قاضي الحاجات يا مجيب الدعوات اللهم بدل سيئاتنا حسنات اللهم بدل سيئاتنا حسنات اللهم إنا نسألك صحبة حبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رب قد حرمنا صحبته في الدنيا فلا تحرمنا إياها في الآخرة اللهم اجمعنا به على خير واجعلنا أهلا لشفاعته وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا منه شربة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا نحن وآبائنا وأمهاتنا وأزواجنا وأولادنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم استر عوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا واكفنا ما أهمنا وأغمنا اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث ومن عذابك نستجير اللهم لا تشمت بنا عدوا ولا حاسدا اللهم لا تشمت بهذه الأمة عدوا ولا حاسدا هيئ لهذه الأمة قادة صالحين وأئمة عاملين أمثال عمر وأبي بكر يا رب العالمين وصلاح الدين إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم إنا نسألك قبل الموت توبة وعند الموت شهادة وبعد الموت راحة وسعادة اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما صفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين